I start? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm Alex Sarian. I'm CEO and co-founder of Netris. Uh, our, our users are DevOps, NetOps, infrastructure ops, engineers. They love Netris because Netris helps them run physical data center networks like in the cloud, getting VPC networking type experience. Uh, my other presentation covered uh, the DevOps perspective. And in this presentation, I'm gonna focus on what it takes NetOps engineer to deliver this experience. Uh, so how can NetOps engineers enable cloud-like networking on-prem for DevOps engineers? This is the question that I will try to answer in, in this presentation. Uh, I started my professional career as a network engineer about 20 years ago. And just probably like many of you, uh, I've started from learning, you know, standard Cisco commands, you know, conf T type things and, you know, saving my IP information in the spreadsheets. And then I've learned programming and start creating scripts. And then, you know, over time I've embraced software defined networking and APIs and started using that too. Uh, but, you know, public cloud kind of set a new standard for what DevOps engineers expect and they expect self-service infrastructure. They, they want, to get their network resources, their, their VPC and everything immediately. And our customers are, uh, are companies that are building cloud native infrastructures, uh, mainly for internal use. So some of them are large enterprises that they have you know, a lot of, lot of environment using some of these you know, traditional and all kinds of technologies. And they just need to have little cloud native island. They are not looking to rebuild the whole thing. No, of course, no. They are just looking for a little cloud native island that would, will be easy to integrate, easy to interconnect with the existing thing. That's one type of uh, customers that we have and target. Uh, some of customers are, you know, building global scale private cloud. So those are, you know, either companies that started in the cloud uh, as a startup, they grew up and their infrastructure became huge and they, they were accustomed to this experience and they, they wanted to build an on-prem, but they wanted to keep using the same tools and same methodologies. So just an example, one of our, 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 our customers is, you know, they are serving hundred millions of online customers and they, they, they left the cloud uh, and they built five data centers. Around, around the world, three in US, one in Europe, one in, uh, one in Asia. But so the goal is to service these customers. They are coming from the cloud and this is what they call networking. This is a screenshot of VPC from AWS. And when this cloud native people say network, this is what they understand. A little window when they put a name, put an IP address, look at NAT gateway configuration. There is nothing about sessions or stuff. This is just not yes, no. Do you need not or no? That's simple. So this is how they understand networking. And when they decide to go, when, when these cloud native people walk out of the cloud and look into on-prem, this is what they're gonna face. This is how networking look like in on-prem. Uh, they don't know how to manage. So I don't think that they need another network specific API to go figure out how to manage this stuff through APIs. No, that's not what DevOps, what DevOps engineers want. They want VPC type networking. And it's on us network engineers to deliver that. So our job is to take that that physical network and turn into that, into that VPC. That's what we need to do. So how are our customers getting this done? Um, so just like with all networks, it usually starts with a whiteboard drawing the, hey, this is the topology that I imagine to build. 
this is at this stage, this is done by NetOps engineers. NetOps engineers are planning this to provide to DevOps engineers, to their customers, right? Internal customers. They, they, if it's a large enterprise, they probably have, you know, a list of IP addresses somewhere. They, they need to think, okay, what IP addresses are we gonna allocate to this new cloud native island? So basic planning. Then uh, when planning is done, you kind of know what, what kind of space and equipment you need. Uh, and uh, they usually our customers go order in a colo space, uh, power, cooling, an empty rack and the hardware. And uh, even before they install hardware into rack, the first step is to get Netris controller installed before, before you reconstruct your gear. So the first step is to get, you know, a one U server, a, a very basic server, uh, connect out of band management and install Netris controller. That one liner is just what it takes to install Netris controller. You just copy and paste on a Linux and it will make it work. Now, the next step is to translate that drawing from whiteboard and uh, IP address list into controller. Can I controller. jump in here with a question on the controller? In your uh, earlier demo, you were talking about uh, having Netris there and you could deploy these VPCs in multiple data centers. Are you gonna show the architecture of you know, multiple, whether it's multiple net Netris controllers in various data centers, like how does the failover work and redundancy and you, know, you lose one data center, you know, what happens to your VPC and your Netris build in, in the other one? Are, will you be covering that at all? Uh, not specifically in this presentation. That's a whole a separate, okay. uh, to, it's a topic for a whole separate presentation, but that's, you described what our customers are, are doing. Like the customer that has five data centers, they don't have five controllers. They, they have one controller and they have one backup controller in another data center. They, they use that to manage all, all five. In short, but like it's a topic. Now, uh, when after you install uh, Netris controller, so this is empty controller. Uh, this is how it looks like. And I've logged in as an admin, not as a DevOps. So that's why I have more buttons here. Uh, and <clears throat> I, I, I wanna quickly walk you through a couple of concepts because uh, the first task is to get that uh, topology information and IP address information into Netris. So Netris knows what topology do we target and what, what is the IP addresses that we are allowed to use. So <clears throat> the, the very first step is to create a site, a data center. You can have as many as you need. Uh, you just give it a name, a name to your site and you type there your public AS number if you happen to use one. You leave everything uh, default for now. Then uh, the next step is to put that information from spreadsheet into that IP address information into Netris. So Netris knows these are public IP addresses that I am allowed to use. And these are private IP addresses that we're gonna use. Question on that. Do you have uh, integration into other IPAM solutions? So info blocks or something else is there a tie-in between those uh not out of the box but we, we provide the apis and and the terraform provider so integrating should be for, for a user it, it is relatively easy to integrate we have some customers that happen to you know put together an in integration in like like a couple of days on their own um <clears throat> so now i'm gonna populate this controller with that information, uh, but I'm lazy like a DevOps engineer and I, I gonna, I gonna do this using Terraform. And there's documentation on, you know, how to, you know, this, all these kind of different resources. In my other presentation, I covered how DevOps engineer can use load balancer construct, but there are, all constructs are there. You can do your IP addresses, your BGPs, your switches, both DevOps and network engineering constructs. So to save your time, I have pre-populated my Terraform files. 
I just gonna apply what I've got. Okay, now when I have applied this, uh, we can see that my IPAM information has been populated. So basically that planning information has been loaded into controller. Now I've got, you know, here's the public subnet that I'm using. That's a private subnet. And that's the, you know, percentage of used versus free. And when we go inside IP addresses, uh, there's name, there's type, we distinguish between allocation and subnet. But uh, we, we also have this notion of purpose. What is that particular IP subnet for? Is this to be used for management? Is this to be used for loopback? Uh, and you, you, you had a question about load balancer. That's there too, uh, partially. So this is this piece here to be used for the load balancer. So you can, you, so you don't, you know, there's limited resources. Network engineer controls what IP addresses go to what purpose. It's not DevOps engineer cannot do that. They, it's not their business, but they just need to get the service. So this is how we do this. We mark, we assign purpose to IP addresses. Those are for this and like others are common IP addresses that can be used for all kinds of other things. So in here, you've got subnets. Can you do, um, instead of doing like a whole subnet, could you just say uh, like a range of say 10 addresses or does it have to be an entire block? Uh, uh, not, not necessarily. If you, if you have like, like five blocks and mark all of them as a load balancer, Net, Netris will use all of them okay. one, one by one. So the, then the, the next, Next thing is to populate Netris controller with the rest of the you know, hardware uh, information with the, with the topology. Uh, that needs to happen before you, you know, start rake and stack your stuff. And I'm gonna use Terraform again. Uh, I just copied Terraform files from another folder to this folder so I can you know, apply these things in stages. So now we've got uh, our inventory filled up. So we've got you know, objects describing controller, soft gate switches that we have. And those descriptions, they, they really require very high level information. If we edit one of those, like one switch here, it's just name, it's just, just a description. You can write whatever you want there. Uh, you, you select that operating system that we are planning to install. Uh, you, can, you can select the S number or we can just say assign automatically. It, same for IP addresses. You can say assign automatically and Netris will do these things automatically. There is no need to describe you know, any, anything related to implementation, how, how configure interfaces or how configure protocols. Just high level, name of the switch, uh, and in this other view, the topology view, this is like a whiteboard. Uh, so this is where you draw your topology. So just because I have, I've used Terraform to apply all these switches, uh, the locations are messed up, which is fine. Uh, I'm gonna <coughs> uh, align them. Okay, now they are aligned and we have this six switches here, uh, these two soft gate nodes. I'm gonna save this. So if, if I restart it, I, I'm not gonna lose the alignment. <clears throat> and I have also described my upstream connections. So all, you know, the entire topology has been described here. Those are two connections into my upstream providers. And there's, there's, you know, uh, in, in this case, we're using a BGP to connect with the upstream providers and those are described here. 
so far, this is only high level information. Uh, that's it. Nothing is working. Switches are, are still hanging on the floor. Now, now when I've got that described here in the Netris, the, it's, it's time to reconstruct the hardware. So basically, I, I take this diagram in Netris, go to data center and reconstruct them, connect them the way I have described in, in this tool. Uh, we probably will have something like this. Hopefully it will look better than this. But when that's done, it's time to go and install the switches, uh, put Netris agent on it and get things up and running. Uh, again, to save your time, uh, I have operating systems pre-installed on the switches and I have Netris service stopped. I'm gonna use uh, this little script here called Netris start, which will just go and enable Netris service on every single switch. That's it, Not, nothing more. And there's no configuration on the switches. And I, I'm gonna edit one of the soft gates. Remember soft gates are like our routers. Those are Linux machines with a SmartNIC card and PPDK acceleration. So they act as a gateway, as a border router, as a load balancer. Uh, <clears throat> and I will start a ping towards IP address of this one. Now in the future, could that, that gateway be a physical router if somebody needed uh, a more performant up, up link connection to the network or the internet? Uh, yep. And uh, there's, a, there's a slide about that. Okay. Just a sec. So <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna start Netris so to simulate the process of you know, installing the switches, they are reconstacked, they are installed. Now they will start coming live. So these switches will, will boot up, they will load Netris agent. Netris agent will 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 load and will will start communicating with Netris controller and figuring out how to configure the switches, how to make this network work. Uh, based on the topology that we draw here and based on the information about upstreams. So once agent is up and running configuration, uh, it's, it's configuring switches, we also start monitoring things. So we automatically understand what switches are these, what, are, what type of power supplies do they have, what, uh, what, what are the fan speeds? And we, we monitor all these things that network engineers would normally do, like this minimal monitoring stuff. And we start sending alarms. You can see once, once I've enabled the agents, we, we've seen some alarms, some red, some green. And the whole thing is still in, 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 the, in the process of provisioning. Uh, we can even look into some of these devices, like we can look into SoftGate. We can use this looking glass tool. It's a network engineer tool and to see what's happening inside. We can see that uh, BGP sessions are configured. Uh, they are newly configured 40 seconds ago. Some are already up uh, for others who are still waiting. Uh, so when, when provisioning is done, this thing will, will work uh, and we, we, uh, we, we can do the other things working. We can start working on the DevOps uh, side of things. Now, <clears throat> yeah, we can see I, I'm getting ping responses. So. What, what happened, the, the, the switches in Santa Clara are provisioned, are up and running, are responding. We are connected to the upstreams, we're on the internet. Now going back to slides, what happened? First, we've described our topology and IP addresses in Netris controller, then we brought in the switches. Uh, answering your question, what switches do we support? So. Today, we support uh, switches that can run 
Cumulus Linux, they, they can run Ubuntu Linux with a switch dev or Sonic. Those are that we support right now, but we are using just a standard things. There is no nothing proprietary. We're using standard VXLAN, standard eBPN, standard BGP. If you, if you SSH on one of the switches and look the configuration, everything is there, just a standard like the operating system described in their documentation. So today we are more focused on user experience, on DevOps experience, on delivering the VPC. But in the future, potentially, we can support more vendors or more vendors can integrate with Netris agent and they can become Netris supported. Uh, then, uh, then this other component that we've provisioned is SoftGate is just a bare metal machine with a two in Intel CPUs, eight cores each, 128 gig RAM running Ubuntu Linux. It has a SmartNIC card and a DPDK based acceleration. So we use SoftGate to provide border router functionality and we can do million routes, we can do a full routing table. We can forward uh, 100 gigs per second at 25 million packets per second packet rate. And some of our customers are answering your question uh, for border routers. Some of our customers, they, they use SoftGate uh, as a border router. So uh, instead of buying like a physical traditional router like ASR. Instead of that, they just use this Linux machine, 100 gigs per machine, that, that's, that's enough for them, so they use it. In the future, we will also be able to horizontally scale them. Today, it's active, stand, active standby, two machines, but in the future, we'll be able to horizontally scale them. Well, enough about networking, networking, because so far, like if we stop there, you're gonna say, hey, but software-defined networking and intent-based networking can do similar things. Uh, but that's not what our goal is. Our goal is to provide VPC networking, just like in the cloud, to our DevOps engineer. So let's see what it takes to enable that. Uh, here, in our user management, I'm gonna show the DevOps user there's DevOps user, there's DevOps role, there's DevOps permission group. And in permission group, I kind of control what features of Netris I, I want them to use to, to self-service. And I also control which resources I, I let them to use because I want them to self-service, but I don't want them to break something on my networking site. So uh, if we go back to uh, IP manager that we've pre-populated here, we can see that for some subnets, we, we have allocated to DevOps resources. So basically DevOps engineers are allowed to use this particular subnets. They cannot, they are not allowed to use others. And same with the switch ports, uh, if, they, if they use <clears throat> they cannot create their VNets using just any network resource in, 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 in the network. They, I need to limit what resources they can use. So let's say I want to <clears throat> select all ports that are free on, on my leaf layer switches that are free. Those that are not free, I have used in other purposes. Uh, those that are free, I will assign to uh, DevOps engineers. This is how I assign it. <clears throat> now they can do this. Now I'm gonna log out from here and I'm gonna log in as a DevOps engineer. As a DevOps engineer, you can see that I'm seeing only limited amount of things and I can only create services. And <clears throat> Uh, here in this console, I have logged into one of my servers uh, that I want to administer. I wish it has internet access, network access, but it, it doesn't exist. So I, as a, net, 
as a DevOps engineer now, I'm going to create this service. <clears throat> select the data center. Uh, I select the IP address from the list that were allowed me to use. I select all the ports because I'm DevOps engineer. I don't care if I can do this, I'm doing this. <clears throat> it says provisioning. Uh, it should take a few more seconds, provision, and now DevOps engineer can have access. And if I log out as a DevOps engineer and log in again as an AdOps engineer, as an admin, I can see that, wow, now there's a one VNet configured. Seems like my users, my DevOps engineers are using this. And I can go and I can list the services that they have created. Oh, they, these guys have created a VNet, nice. Okay, by the way, what MAC addresses are they using? So I can go and find answers to my network engineer questions in my view and DevOps engineers can self-service in their view. So what we did here, we, we as a network engineer, we started with that with a bunch of hardware. We provisioned the switches, we assigned the roles and now our user, the DevOps engineer can get that. DPC type user experience, but on prem. Could you clarify? I mean, it looks like a zero touch deployment, the actual switches, but you still need to install the agent on them before you actually do this. Is that correct? And how do you get the agent on? That's a, that's a great question. So uh, in, in this example, I, I've manually enabled, disabled the agents. Uh, in this very release, the Net, NetOps engineer is supposed to install the operating system and install the agent, which is like copy and pasting one command. But in next, from next release, we're, we're currently uh, working on zero touch provisioning. Remember we were selecting the type of the operating system. So that's for zero touch provisioning. So system knows which operating system am I supposed to install? So that will come in next release. And it just finds the um, controller like DNS based or something. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, we, we, we automatically run a, a DHCP server on a management network. Yeah. It looked like there was a, a button, I think it was like telescope or something like that. Um, I'm guessing that's just to be able to get like reporting data, stuff like that. Are you, are you able to kind of see the history of this many IPs, this many load balancers and kind of what that, that trend or what those patterns look like? Uh, yeah, the, the short answer is we, we automatically create the the amount of monitoring functions and tools uh, that most of the network engineers would love to create. We provide that out of the box and that's what Telescope is. Uh, 